Hi, this is Meyer with Boutique Paint. Today I'd like to show you how to paint on terracotta or this also works on concrete pots. Um, you're probably thinking it's painting. What big deal can you show me about painting on a pot that, you know, painting's painting. Well, there's a couple tricks and I didn't want to have an all over paint that's obviously an easy thing to do is just paint the whole thing. Um, but I did a wipe back on this. And the reason why it's a little different is because terracotta is so um, porous and it just sucks the water up. And I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to go ahead and just spray this. And while we're talking here for a quick second, you can see how quickly that's absorbing and soaking into the pot. So when you do that with the paint, especially a um, mineral or chalk style paint, the same thing because you have something that is um, basically got calcium or um, clay in it, it works very much similar to the terracotta or the concrete. It just, so it'll dry super, super fast is the point. The nice thing about DIY paint, especially is as long as it hasn't completely set up or you haven't um, done your top coat, you can reactivate it for a while with just water. So what I'm going to do first, I mixed, this is um, DIY's White Swan, and I mixed it 50-50 water and paint. And you can see I didn't mix up even that much and just mixed up a little bit. I used part of it already on this, but it doesn't take much. Um, you can't really do it too wrong if it's if it's not um, watered down enough. Just add a little bit more. You can tell when you're doing it. You'll be able to kind of get a feel for it if it's working the way it's supposed to or not. The trick to do this, though, is to be spraying the heck out of the terracotta. Now, I found these cute little pots at our local Asian market down the street. The owner's son didn't even know they owned, had them in the store. I've been buying them um, for the last like two years. And he didn't even know they were in the store. He thought I brought them in. You can see how quickly this is drying. So you just really want to give it a good spray. I'm going to start at the top because it's going to drip. And so then I want to be able to take care of the drips once I um, get down there. Here you can kind of see that um, I went from the bottom to the top. And then when I came back down around, I saw my drip marks, so I had to go back around. So just to kind of save time, um, we'll start at the top. So I've got my brush all saturated, but I'm going to go ahead and just kind of squeeze out that. And I am going to go ahead, and you can see it's making a mess. So put something down, preferably like a piece of plastic, and then like newspaper or something absorbent um, or something that you can just like a mat where you can just wipe it up really easily so i'm going to go a little bit on the inside this one i had i spilled it all over on the inside so i had to just add some paint and i'm probably will have to do that here because i'll probably sell these without plants in it you want the inside to look eh, okay you know you don't want just drip marks because that looks kind of funky so I'm going to take a paper towel and I'm going to wet it down and then I'm going to wet this down again and I'm just going to come along here and pull the paint back off. And this part you can do to whatever your liking is. There's no right or wrong. It's just, you know, what you think looks good to you. Remember that, you know, the difference when it dries, that um, the whole thing will have kind of a milky tint to it, as opposed to the red, depending, because you, because the paint is getting into the pores, so it, there will be some left behind. So, see the drips? That's what I wanted to avoid having to do twice. So, I'm going to go ahead and just... Clean that up a little bit. I'll probably go in there and put more paint in there just so it looks more like that one. So now we're going to turn it. Same thing. Spray it again. 
because it just is so dry. You can see how much water I put on this and it's almost completely dry. It's just absolutely amazing. I have concrete pots that I've done different things with and I'm just always amazed on how quickly they dry. The core doesn't dry quite as fast, obviously, because it's all soaking straight in. And you can see it's just a gluppy mess underneath. So I'm only doing this in sections so that I can wipe it back. If you work fast, you could probably, you know, do, or you could do it in halves too. Um, I just felt like doing it this way made sense to me. So the key is really just keeping it wet until you've got it where you want it. There's a drip mark. So I'm going to spray that extra good with water and it will wipe back. That's almost too much of a wipe back. So I'm going to add a little bit. There's some paint there, so I'm just going to add it. And you can use a rag also. I'm going to grab another paper towel here. Rag actually might be better just because... Um, the paper towel kind of breaks down. Leaves, it does leave a little bit of fuzzy behind, not bad, but you can, you can kind of see there's little bits and pieces of the paper towel, which is not a big deal. Um, you can always brush it off when it's dry. But we have so many distractions these days. You know, you start a project and then a kid runs through the house or husbands or whatnot. And then you walk away from a project and you're like, ah, that was a horrible place to walk away. That's one nice thing about the DIY paint. It, um, I can come back and that might work for other paints. This is just the paint I'm very familiar with in comparison. Um, but yeah, it lets you come back and reactivate it. So there we got the top. Now I'm going to go around on this bottom half. And I didn't spray. You can also spray the inside um, too. Just you know, soak the whole thing if you want. That way it'll stay moist while you're working. All right, and once again, so I like projects that I can come back if I have to stop in the middle and come back to and it's you can pick it up where you left off because my house is one of those houses that something is always going on you wouldn't think so because we don't have technically we don't have kids at home anymore but I'm sure those of you who have kids that have left know what I'm talking about they seem to come back in and out the door they need food they need something all right I'll clean up my mess here a little bit because that was a lot of water. But that's the way it will look. I'm going to miss a spot here. So on this one, you can leave it just like this. This is the look you want. I wanted it to have a little bit of green on the bottom as if it's been sitting outside for a while and it's got a little bit of moss growing on it, greenery growing on it. So you can do this a couple different ways to add this. I'm going to do that so it doesn't want to roll. Um, I'm using a darker green. And this is a 
what they call it's from DIY's lab. It was a color they mixed and you know they're always experimenting with what colors they want to do next. So this is one of the the mixed colors. So I'm going to just take a paintbrush with bristles instead of a foam brush on this part. You can also use the paper towel and I'll show you both. Um, and just get a smidge of paint on there and then you can spray that down and then spray this down. You know the drill now. And you just can kind of go along and add it. Then you can come back and you can blot it off. So that's one way. That can give you quite a bit of paint on there quickly. Um, if it's too much, you can wipe it back or you can do it this way. This is, once again, uh, just a smidge of paint with water. Matter of fact, it probably could use a smidge more water in there. And then, same paintbrush. And then that gives you more of a wash. See how much thinner that one is. Same thing, just kind of. Wipe back. And then the other way is you can take a paper towel and paper towels usually have kind of bumps on it like this and you can just take a little bit of paint. There we go. That would probably do it. Just hopefully that's staying focused for you. Um, I know when you put something close to the camera lens it sometimes spazzes out. So, just see how it just kind of leaves speckles as opposed to paint brush marks. And I kind of like this. I kind of like this look, especially on this edge. But you can play with it. And the nice thing is, is because you can keep watering it down and pulling it back, um, you know, if you don't like the look of it, just wet it back down. So that is pretty much it. And then you just let it dry. And then if you're giving it like as a gift or for yourself and you put your plant in there, you could even, you know, go along this edge. I kind of like that actually. Just a little bit on that edge. Um, let's get... So that's a little bit heavy. But like I said... If you don't like it pull it back so see you can yeah I like that that looks good so too much there because I can't leave things alone <laughs> I decided to go ahead and wax it so I've waxed most of this I'm just adding the clear wax once you add the clear wax, then you could add dark wax, you could add the white wax, and just add a little bit. But I wanted to add some of the dark and decrepit, um, just to give it a little bit of a dirty, dirty look. So this is that powder. Usually, I take some out of here. I just kind of put it on a piece of paper. I'm just going to put it on my work surface here. And then take a little bit. This is a wax brush. I don't use it for anything else. Um, usually I write on it dark, but this is pretty apparent. Um, and usually I don't just dip it into my, my white. I usually get a little bit of wax out. Um, but I'm just going to make kind of a pasty. So I can add just a little bit. And I don't want it everywhere. I just want it kind of sprinkled. Maybe a little bit around the top. You're just wanting it to kind of get a little bit of a feel of age to it. So you can't see it that well. I mean, it's not a, you know, in your face thing 
that you're adding to it. That, even that where it's dark, it's still, it's very subtle. Just kind of get it in there. And then you could wipe it back if you want. I don't. I usually, uh, with the dust, just put it on and just kind of leave it. Let it do its thing. But yeah, I like, I like the look of adding a little bit of the wax. I mean the uh, dark and decrepit dust. I love working with this stuff. It's just, it's just fun. You can just see it a little bit here. And that's it. If you have any questions about any of the products I used, you can go to our website at www.boutiquepaint.com or you can leave a question in the comments below. And thank you so much for joining me. Bye.